Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, the RBI has raised repo rates by 50 basis points this week amidst rising concerns over surging inflation, global headwinds and a slump in the rupee to its record lows. The topic on Smart Money today is how do I protect my portfolio amidst a rising interest rate environment? What are the different tools that you can use? Today on our radar is target maturity debt funds. Our expert is Radhika Gupta, MD and CEO of Edelweiss Asset Management who joins us on the show. Radhika, thank you so much for joining us. At the onset, I wanted to ask you about whether, uh, you know, at a time like this, right, with interest rates rising across the globe and in India, are debt funds now a better option than, say, fixed deposits, of course, and also given the rising interest rates, is it a good option to invest into debt funds right now? So I think in terms of comparison to fixed deposits, Sonia, I think for most investors, the answer is unequivocally yes, because there is a significant post-tax delta. If you look at the class of debt funds that we are talking about, target maturity funds or even other debt funds, because they enjoy the benefit of indexation, your post-tax returns over FD, the delta can be as high as 2 plus percent, which is very, very significant. Now, coming to the second question, is it a good time to look at uh, debt funds as a category? I would say yes, I think it is a good time if you're looking to lock in high rates of interest, uh, you know, for a considerable period, whether it's five years, 10 years, etc. Then you want to do it when interest rates are high and why not now so i mean the old the old proxy that we remember is if fd rates are high you know you rather block uh, your fds for long the same thing goes with debt funds so uh, it's no there's no better time than this in that sense to lock in rates for the long term okay there's no better time than now and perhaps rates could go up further right of course uh, there are just a couple of meetings left before the end of the year but in all likelihood the consensus is that another perhaps 35 basis points higher rates is what the rbi could do well let's talk about target maturity debt funds right just to understand for the benefit of our viewers what exactly is a target maturity fund and why should i be interested in it so I think very simply, a target maturity fund has the features of a regular bond in a mutual fund format. When you buy a bond of any issuer or a GSEC, you buy it and you hold it till maturity. And if you buy it today, if I buy a 10-year bond, if I, if I hold it till maturity, I will get a certain rate of interest. A target maturity fund tries to replicate that format but it just buys a collection of bonds. Those co bonds could be GSEC, those bonds could be state development loans, those bonds could be PSU bonds. But the idea is that you buy bonds of a certain maturity, which is the target maturity. That could be 2025, that could be 2030, that could be 2020, 2037. You buy it and you hold it till maturity. So it has the features of the bond with the diversification of a mutual fund. And it is in an open-ended debt fund format. Okay, so it's an open-ended debt fund form. It means there's no lock-in period, right? Yeah, and this is a question we get from a lot of investors that when they compare it to traditional instruments, what are the lock-in sort of challenges? Mm. There is no lock-in. Uh, you know, in fact, we've been running this category now for three years. They also actually are very, very liquid. So in, in our AMC, we have processed very large single layer redemptions and subscriptions also. So because the underlying is very, very liquid, uh, you know, that is not a challenge. Plus, these are open-ended funds in the first place. Okay. Uh, can you compare it to an active debt fund? Uh, of course, you told us that it's open-ended, so that is a big difference. But apart from that, uh, in terms of returns, in terms of perhaps other pros, um, how does it compare to an active debt fund? So there are lots of categories of active debt funds. But if I were to take something that is a common proxy, which is maybe a banking PSU debt fund or a corporate bond fund, um, or maybe a medium duration fund, these are fun, or guilt fund actually, these are not funds with declining duration. In a target maturity fund, your maturity and duration decline over the fund life. In a regular actively managed debt fund, you are always carrying duration risk. It could be two to three years, it could be four to five years. In the case of guilt funds, it could be eight to nine years. Now, what does this mean for the consumer? In a target maturity debt fund, because it's like a bond and you're not, you're carrying a declining duration, basically, if you buy and hold over the tenure of the fund, 
you actually have a predictable return, which is why the category has grown so much. So if I am entering today with a yield of say 7.5 on a 2037 target maturity fund, and I stay invested till 2037, I am likely to get that seven and a half percent. This experience you can't re replicate in an actively managed fund where, where you enter, where you exit, all that starts to matter. So timing matters a lot more in an actively managed fund. It doesn't matter in a passively managed fund. There's a high predictability of returns, which is what has worked. The one category of old school actively managed funds that was similar to this was FMPs, but they had their challenges of not being transparent. They were closed ended, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. How do I identify target maturity funds as an investment option? And I'm also asking because, you know, we did see uh, issues like, say, the ILNFS crisis a couple of years ago. Um, and a lot of people believe that you don't know what kind of paper. Of course, uh, target maturity debt funds invest in high quality AAA, government paper, etc. But how do I identify uh, target maturity debt funds as an investment option? So you have to look at uh, broadly two or three things. One is, of course, you have to look at the maturity of the target maturity debt fund. And, you know, I'm just giving you a quick rundown because there are so many launches happening in this category as I see it. So one, you have to see the maturity and you have to align your goal to the maturity. So, uh, you know, if you have money that you need in 2026 and 2030, pick two funds, 2026 and 2030. The second is you need to look at the underlying portfolio. Since you pointed out credit issues in the past, you need to see what the target maturity fund holds each target maturity fund because these are passively managed funds has an index and sevi has very tight rules around what indices can be like and how you measure to the index so the index will tell you what the composition of the fund is and the fund manager really can't deviate from the index so usually target maturity funds have either GSEX, which is completely government of India, state development loans, which also carry a sovereign rating, or AAA PSUs in the case of something like Bharat Bond, uh, which I would call it the category of quasi-sovereign. So today, the universe of target uh, maturity funds is either sovereign or extremely high credit quality. But you need to look at the index that your target maturity fund has to determine what it's going to hold. Actually, it's become a buzzword right now. I mean, I've seen that in the last uh, six to eight months, uh, target maturity funds have really picked up. Why do you think that is, Radhika? Up until now, there was not so much talk about it. Of course, we're also now in a rising interest rate scenario, so it helps. But uh, in general, why do you think the popularity has gone up now? Yeah, I think the category uh, sort of started in late 2019 when Bharat Bond launched mm -hmm. and um, we've studiedly seen flows in that. To give you an example, we have something called the Bharat Bond Fund of Funds program, which is really retail kind of money. Uh, and that started a couple of hundred crores back in 2019. Um, but people kept adding it's now 17,000 crores. And, you know, interest rates have gone up and interest rates have gone down in that regime. I think what has worked for people is the whole element around predictability of returns. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, now a much wider set of asset management companies are participating. I think consumers have tasted these funds. They've tasted the experience in the funds. In fact, in a rising rate environment, I should also tell you that, Sonia, uh, people like us have hardly seen redemptions because the mindset really has been, okay, I've invested till 2030. I'm not going to redeem this money. Um, so I think a positive consumer consumer experience over the last couple of years, understanding of the asset class has probably led to the increased popularity. And it is truly, I mean, you know, we are launching a 2037 product as we speak. The net benefit versus FD on that one post tax is almost 3%. Now, that's very, very substantial. Absolutely. And at a time when I think other asset classes like equities are going through a bit of a challenge, right? When there's a recession globally and risky assets are not preferred, maybe target maturity debt funds uh, are perhaps the way to go. Let's do one thing. Let's take a quick commercial break. We have many more questions for Radhika, so don't go anywhere. We also have our financial health tip of the week, so you'd want to stay tuned in for that. We'll come back in a bit. अच्छा आप किसान हैं सिर्फ किसान ही नहीं दुकानदार हो 